I think the police department are entirely too lenient with these vicious exhibitions of sex. You're entirely right, Henry. I don't see what's happening to our youngsters today. I see that that philanthropist, Paul Lorenz, and his committee are doing a wonderful work. He'll soon clean up this filth and educate the youngsters towards a better life. The joy out of life. Why don't they reform themselves and give us a chance to get a little innocent fun once in a while? I'm going over to Jane's house. They'll probably try to stop me from doing that pretty soon. It can't be that James is interested in this sort of entertainment. Oh, <laughs> impetuous youth, mother. He's like all the rest. Now, don't worry about him. He'll be all right. I hope so. <laughs> Betty, the principal objection made by the commissioner was when Sheila Wayne removed her last bit of clothing and walked off smiling to the audience. You must have plenty of it. I wish I could do that instead of slaving in this office. I'll bet you could. You do have plenty of it. You think so? Say. I wonder if I couldn't be a striptease queen. What's she got that I haven't got? How do they do it? Zip. Off. Zip. See, what do you say we go and see her tonight? It'll be great fun. All right, let's plan it tonight. Oh, great. having a little innocent fun. Oh, let's go to bed. <laughs> All right.
you. Another grand performance under the belt. And do I need relaxation? Oh, I'm tired. Me for bed. Bed? Did you say bed? <laughs> that's not too relaxing, that's for action. <laughs> Doc, it was taking my clothes off when I come into the theater, putting them on again, taking them off for the customers, putting them on again, taking them off again when I'm ready to go home. I think it's time I gave the old mouth a chance and had a drink. Well, now that you're all through for tonight, I, I guess you can enjoy yourself. Hey, you said it. You know what? That's exactly what you're going to do. We've got a date with Tom Lorenz. Oh, not me, thanks. I, I've got some letters to write. Don't you know who he is? His father's the biggest reformer in town. Is that funny or is that funny? Oh, well, then now you go right ahead. After all, you know, who is company? But he's got friends with him. Big time, sister, we're going to step out. Oh, not me, Sheila. I'm going home. You know what I have to do. Yeah, I know. You've got to see that doctor in the morning, and you want to look well. Oh, I suppose you'd put it that way. Listen, Millicent, you're only wasting your time. I went to a quack for a long time, and what did he ever do for me? Oh, but I tell you, I, I've got to get well. You've got your old age to settle down and get well in. These boys will show us a swell time, and they want to meet you. Oh, some other time, please, Sheila. I'm, besides, I'm, I'm very tired tonight. Well, sure. I'm tired every night until I get out, and then I want to go to town. Oh, well, and now listen. You go ahead and enjoy yourself. I tell you what to do. You take Alice Carter with you. You know, she's lots of fun. So I'd, I'd only spoil your party. Well, I guess that's that. Behold, Alice Carter in person. Did someone mention my name? Well, yes, Barry, but... Okie doke, let's go. I'm in on that date. Sure. Sometime when I got a grudge against myself, I'll take you along. Is that so? Easy now, boys. The best part of the evening is about to begin. <laughs> oh, Tom Moran, you sure can pick them. No matter how much Tom's father reforms them, he always finds a new one. <laughs> you sure can pick them, Tom. Easy on that reform stuff now, boys. Here comes Sheila. Hello, Tom. Waiting long? No, no. Uh, where, where's Sheila? She ran home to put on her evening gown. So what? She says for you to meet her outside of Mrs. Fay's house tonight. There's a big party on tonight. Well, will there be plenty of girls there? Oh, there'll be lots of girls. Okay, oh. baby, how'd you, would you like to come along? Yes, oh, why don't you come along? Oh, come, yeah. on, come, come on, come on, come on, Oh, I'm please. sorry, boys, but I have a previous appointment. Oh, please, oh, no. Oh, no. Good night. Have a good time. Okay, sis, and thanks for the message, honey. for you after the show. Oh, yes, I am very tired. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without you, Mrs. Jonas. You're so kind. Not I used to be in show business once upon a time, and I know that with a little kindness, you can accomplish a great deal. Oh. You know, Mrs. Jonas, we girls are certainly lucky having a uh, landlady like you around here. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm happy. When you girls try, I do all in my power to help you. 
But how are you feeling tonight, honey? Oh, not so well. Oh, my dear. Here I am gossiping and I forgot all about a special delivery letter that came for you this evening. Oh, that's the second one today. That boyfriend of yours must be very lonesome for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mrs. Jonas. Oh, I must go to see Elizabeth. Good night. Happy dreams. Good night, Mrs. Jonas. you mind our being here? Of course not, darling. We were just talking about clothes. You know how we girls are. Oh, my. Are you having a good time? I hope so. Three boys are having a good time. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> and that's how she met the traveling salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, honey, let's go have another drink. <laughs> No, there's one thing about these house parties. Makes everyone feel so informal. <laughs> sure. We all feel like we know each other all the time. <laughs> Long enough to fall in love with you at first sight. Pomeranian. Well, Betsy, why don't you take your boyfriend and show him the house? How about it, Jerry? Well, it's okay with me. We'll find some cozy little corners. Mm -hmm. oh. We hope it's right. That's a great idea. Come on, Joy. I'll show you the guest room. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad they left. Last thing I hope. I hope they stay a while. That. 
its best under the circumstances. Syphilis is a relentless enemy, and only constant and courageous fighting will conquer. Now, this boy at home, do you love him? Oh, yes. Then you must be fair to him. Oh, well, there isn't anything I wouldn't do to prove myself to him. We grew up together. It was all so beautiful until... until a dreadful thing happened. Miss Hamilton, your character doesn't indicate why you should be in this mess. What happened? Tell me everything. Well, I won a beauty contest at home, and I came to New York. I know you'll think me a little selfish, but I can't help feeling a little sorry that you won this contest. Oh, but darling, you know how I feel about it. Why, oh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. What do you think? Going to New York. Oh, I'm pleased that you're happy. Well, I'm afraid that if you go, it'll upset our plans. Oh, but Dolly, you wouldn't let that happen, would you? Oh, nothing could stop me from marrying you. You see, I, I love you. <laughs> and besides, I, I may come famous. And, well, then you could come on and we could get married and both of us live happily ever after. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, it's just the usual sort of a story, I suppose. After the contest was over, I, I thought of all the wonderful things a girl ever dreams about. Fame and fortune and luxury. Oh, but I found myself walking from office to office. I was broke. My pride would not let me return home. You see, I had written that I was successful. I could find parties, but, but no positions. And then, and then one day I... I met a theatrical manager. You know, a girl like you has to unbend a little. After all, you haven't had much experience. Oh, but I'm willing to do anything. Well, I'm ambitious. Oh, why don't you give me a chance? And I'm offering you a chance right now. Here we're arranging a lovely weekend out at Long Island. You'll have a swell time and uh, make some good connections. Well, must there always be a social side to this business? <laughs> Well, there must be, if you expect to get anywhere. Oh, you won't have to do anything wrong. Just be nice and entertain. Uh, stand up a moment, will you please? I, I want to see how you shape up. That's right. Now, uh, walk a little towards the door, will you? Yeah, that's right. Now, come back this way. Hmm. All right. Now, raise him up a little. Oh, don't mind me. I, I just want to see if you're the right type. Come on. Oh, come on, bring him up. Ah, bring him up a little higher. Up, up, uh, ah. That's it. Hey, you're going to be okay, honey. You know, uh, I kind of like you myself. All right, all right, have it your own way. Only cut out the whiskey stuff, see? Now, here's the address that you go to. Oh, thank you so much. There was nothing else to do. I just had to have a job. Oh, there were lots of people there, and everything seemed very proper until... She dances divinely, doesn't she, senorita? Oh, lovely, senor. Oh, and how do you like my sonnet? <laughs> well, it, it's much better than mine. See, I, I know such few words. Oh, but we must keep in the atmosphere. After all, this is a costume party, you know. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. So nice. You. And you, you to make the night divine. <laughs> Oh, how I long for all this. A career. To realize it. Luxury. Oh, I'm dreaming. It's best to have all this. Oh, you could have all of this and more if only you would make up your mind to. Oh, oh but I, I want to make a name myself. Oh, I don't care how hard I'd have to work. It would be worth it. Work was never meant for such beautiful little hands as yours. 
Ah, oh, senorita, you could have all of this and more. You could have wealth, luxury, beautiful clothes, servants. Oh, but I couldn't. You oh, don't mean... why don't you let me put your name at the top of the show world? You could have all of this if only you'd let me. Oh, I'd be so grateful. Oh, it's nice to have someone interested in you. Oh, oh but you will help me. My power to help you at all times, to help you in your ambition, to get this and more. Our friendship with wine, sparkling, bright, gorgeous, chanting. It rids the mind of worry, fills the soul with hope. I, I suppose you're right. I, I never tried it. because I was so terribly desperate. That night, there was a wild party. I drank some champagne and went to my head. And then it happened. I gave myself to him. And how long did you stay with this man? Several days, I'm not sure. Oh, it all seemed sort of a terrible dream. And then, many left me. I was all alone. Fine with the horrible kiss dawned upon me. I was afraid and unclean. I needed money for medical attention. I, I even planned suicide, but because I knew my plight would be known at home, I, I determined to go on. And you got the job? In the burlesque show. It was the only job offered. That's my whole story, Doctor. I've omitted nothing. And... And was this your only mistake? Oh, yes. Would to God that I hadn't. There, there, my child. I'll do all I can. Your case, if arrested at once, can be cured. But you must do your part. Now, uh, about this boy. Of course, it's impossible for you to marry him at present. The hospital with me, and I'll show you why. Sorry to keep you waiting, but regulations require hospital clothes. Come with me. Now, this case is a young woman who neglected to take proper care of her affliction. Statistics prove that less than one half of syphilis cases seek treatment or are recognized within the first year of the disease. Here we see the insidious effect of syphilis upon one dainty fingers, hands that rock the cradle, now pleading for humanity's help. For a plague it is that attacks every nerve center, every organ, and every muscle of the human body. Those in the autumn of their lives, left to brood over the folly of ignorance and neglect, in full of ignorance until I paint my clothes. Now, I've shown you the worst side, Miss Hunt, but there's also a hope I want you to let me treat you daily for a short time, say one month, here in the hospital. And then when I'm convinced you're progressing, you may leave and go home. You may not be free to marry. Mary, not yet. But if you continue to take the treatment faithfully from a competent physician at home, in time you'll be cured. Oh, but doctor, then everyone would know. Then go to a nearby city. There are very many fine doctors, and you could visit him at least once a week. But I must advise you against quack, unscrupulous doctors who promise you complete health and only prolong your case. They exact heavy fees, and all your good work thus far will be lost. In any event, you are not to marry until you're definitely cured. I know it sounds hard. But we're dealing with a ruthless foe. 
I understand, Doctor. And I'll do everything you say. That's fine. Now write home that you'll be detained just a little longer. Keep your courage and it'll turn out well. Dr. Hampton, I don't believe people should be ignorant of sex. On the contrary, I believe that the horrible facts concerning the ravages of social diseases will frighten rather than encourage promiscuous relations. Then on the other hand, if we teach them the beauty of a healthful, normal marriage, the spiritual satisfaction, of rearing children, we shall have accomplished our aim. And our younger men and women will soon find themselves fit for the glorious state of God given matrimony. I believe you are right, Mr. Lorenz. The foolish eluding of the facts of life are fast undermining our national health. The latest official statistics prove that one out of every ten are afflicted with a social disease. Unless this is checked through education and drastic treatment, humanity is bound to return to the dark ages of despair. Do you feel equal to the trip? Oh, Doctor, I'm, I'm so grateful and... Oh, so happy. There now, remember, we're not out of it all yet. Now, Millicent, you're leaving for a new life, new thought, new ideal. Fight hard. Follow my instructions and let me hear from you if you need help. I think you'd better hurry. You don't want to miss your train, do you? Well, goodbye, Doctor. And thank you for everything you've done. Goodbye, Millicent. She look pretty, Ma. Oh, my. And she's glad to be home. <laughs> Doc, oh, my sister. Oh, my sister. Oh, Mother, be careful. I have a bad cold. Oh, bother the cold. But don't you remember how Daddy always had the cold? I mixed him up. Why, we'll let you around in no time. Oh, oh, well, Millie, really, haven't you got a hug for you, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> and there's someone waiting for you. Oh, dear. She's our little girl. 
she'll decide what's right when her heart tells her. Because she's so glad to be back to us after her long visit to New York. Yeah, I guess you're right, Mother. They usually are. <laughs> yes. going to the post office, Mother. I'll be right back. All right, darling. Pretty is not she, Mother? She never forgets her New York friends, does she? No. They must be people. Mm -hmm. I'd like to meet some of them nice people. Well, so would I. Mm -hmm. Just that I'm trying to be a bit sensible. Oh, we have such a long time before. But wait. Oh, darling, if you knew just how I long for you each day. It, it's been ages. I never thought I'd be able to bear it with you away from me. Now it's just here and... Oh, you make me so happy. Uh, I couldn't have waited for you. Why, I should have stayed here with you. But you're here now. With me, and with those who love you, never, never, never desert you, no matter what happens. No matter what happens? No matter what happens. See all that God gives you to enjoy? Oh, I see it all, dear. God did give it to enjoy. Help. I just think we're in love. See everything beautiful. Maybe it was intended that way. Okay. Mother intends everyone to be happy, no matter what the past. Come now, bother the past. All it did was keep us apart. Now, together, and all we have is the future to come with. Oh, dearie. I want to be so happy with you. I want to share all your troubles and all your joys. I want to be caught with you. Please, be with me. And I'm holding him off almost by force to delay the wedding. Well, I see no reason for the delay, if you follow my advice. Yes, Doctor. I've been treating you for seven months, haven't I? <laughs> and your chart here indicates Steady improvement. It cost me a lot, Doctor, but I'm so grateful for what you're doing. Oh, but the best doesn't come cheaply. And that leads up to what I have in mind. Yes. A multiple serum treatment. Absolutely new in medical science. Expensive, but uh, the advantages are great. In short, this treatment will make it possible for you to marry within 30 days. Oh, Doctor, you mean I'll be entirely... Sure. Yes. Not an aspect of the disease will be left. You'll even be sick for me. Well, now, Doctor, are you, are you quite sure that within 30 days I'll be able to marry? The day of days you've been waiting for. Marriage, children. And the cost is $100. And it's worth 10 times that.
we're getting after those quacks. No, I, I, I can't seem to read that small print. Ah, you ought to feel great being a father. Yeah, I ought to, but, but I don't. I've been feeling all in lately. Staying up all night with the baby. That's what does that. Yeah, I guess that's it. Mrs. Something must be wrong. It looks so blue. Oh, it's a little thing. You better call Dr. Bird. I don't think anything's serious. But you better look at him. Dr. Bird. My business ain't so hot. <laughs> That's all right. You can take off. Take off for the day and you'll be all right. That's all right. Go home. Goodbye. Well, gee, thanks, Mrs. Ward. And I'll be in just that much earlier on Monday. That's all right. Take a good rest. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go all ahead. Right. No. Is Dr. Baird there, please? Oh, oh, doctor, will you please come right over? Something's happened to baby. Oh, thank you, doctor. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Hope. Is Wendell there, please? Wendell? No, no, he, he's gone. He left a little while ago. Said he was going straight home. Wasn't feeling so well again, you know, his eyes. Oh, oh thank you, Buck. You're welcome. Bye. Folks, you have a very sick child. My advice is to get a specialist. Oh, Francis. What is it, Dr. Baird? Tell me. He has a toxic condition. His pulse is high, and he's feverish. Frankly, Mrs. Hamilton, he's desperately ill. Oh, Doctor. You can't mean. My advice is a pediatrician. This baby needs one. And I want both of you to come to my office at two this afternoon. Well, there you are. There, that's fine. Well, you're the third doctor I've been to already. I'm, I'm getting pretty discouraged. Well, it takes time. It takes time, my boy. Besides, you haven't been to the right one. Now, your case is my specialty. Yes, that's what the last doctor told me. It's cost me an awful lot already. Well, you're just paying the price of your folly, my boy. Now, uh, this little treatment I'm suggesting will be expensive, but you'll be cured. Well, I'll, I'll manage it somehow. Here's $75 on account. I'll pay you the rest in a few days. Why, well, that's fine. Now, uh, tomorrow morning... Uh... Dr. Hampton, there is no doubt, but what your work in helping this campaign for education will in time, it will in time bring these intolerable, horrible ravages of social diseases such as syphilis and gonorrhea absolutely under control. Mr. Lorenz, 
Your generous donation is the only thing that makes it possible to carry on our scientific research. There still remains a mountain of work for you and your co-workers to help us carry on. Well, good night. Good night, Doctor. It's been good to see you. Yes. We meet again at, at the conference tomorrow. Tomorrow. Good night, sir. Good night, Doctor. Oh, son, we just missed Dr. Hampton. Yes, but I didn't miss the conversation. The door was slightly ajar, and, well, I couldn't help it over here. Good. Then you know the important work we're doing. Well, I know I've made a mess out of my life. Why, what do you mean? I mean that if I'd only been taught the awful truth about social disease years ago, well, well, I wouldn't be talking to you now. I... I don't understand. Father, I... I hate to tell you this, but... I've become a victim. I've contracted syphilis. You have... what? Yes, yes, it's the truth, Father. And I'm pretty... pretty ashamed of it. But I don't know, I had to see you, to talk to you. I, I, God, I've got to get some advice about this. How did this happen? Well, we were on a party. Why didn't you come to me sooner? Well, I, I didn't want you to know about it. I, well, I don't know. I went to quacks and clinics and tried to take care of myself. And all they did was take my money and, and they did nothing. My boy, we've got a fight ahead of us. But I'm happy that you had the courage to come to me. And I must ask you, Wendell, are you entirely well? Well, as a matter of fact, Doctor, my eyes have been bothering me lately, but I'm, I'm all right. You don't mean that for God's sake, you don't mean that I'm responsible for my baby, that... Well, children. Your youngster has all the earmarks of the cases recorded in this medical book. Mm -hmm. And while I hate to tell you, you must know the truth. The truth, Doctor? The truth. Your baby is syphilitic, and one or both of you are the cause. What in God's name are you talking about? What is that I did? You Lord. Not uh, an aspect of the disease will be left. I know one who did this. Me. Only me. I had the disease. Oh, but the doctor said that I was cured. Oh, I believed him. I believed him. <laughs> I'm a murderer, that's what I am. I murdered my baby. And now I'm murdering my husband. Oh, please, please. Get him, Dr. Harris, from New York Neurological Hospital. Oh, please. Oh, he's so very boring. Oh, I, I should have stayed with him. where death may be striking at this very moment from this dreaded disease. Only the light of truth reached the dangers of syphilis. And with scientific treatment, these horrors can be brought under control and countless innocent victims saved. We must continue this important work of education and forget our prudish attitude towards sex. Enlighten your children. Teach them the facts of life. And trust them to avoid the dangerous pitfalls of these ravaging social diseases. I want to give you 
a concrete example of what I mean. Tom Lorenz, the son of our crusader, in our great work. Ladies and gentlemen, first, I want to thank my father that his fight against the follies of youth have saved me from a life of misery. And tonight, I want to relate to you my own experiences with this blight upon mankind. Our crowd of boys were out for a good time and we went to a burlesque show. Oh, we thought we were regular cut-ups, all right. From the show, we went to a house party with drinks and girls and, well, all that goes with it. That was the start of months of misery with patent medicine, quack doctors, and sleepless nights. Until finally, I came to my father for help. He had a competent physician treat me, and soon my health and spirits returned. And that's why I'm here tonight. Unashamed spread the gospel for the benefit of the countless boys and girls who, like myself, indulged in supposedly innocent fun. about you. I hear you walking up and down. Oh, come to me, darling. Oh, we both need to sleep. I'll prepare something for you. Just a moment, please. New York calling. Here's your party. Hello? Millie, I couldn't keep the news to myself any longer. Guess what? I met him, I love him, tonight he proposed. Oh, but you... Yes, I know, but I'm going to be all right. I've been to a real doctor. You had the right idea about those treatments. I laughed at them but I know better now. You mean, you are? Oh, that's, that's fine. The doctor has been treating me for over a year now. Now only a year longer. But it's worth waiting for. I know it. I can have a baby. Oh, I, I know you'll be very happy. Gee, I've got everything in the world to live for now. And just think, Millie, at one time I thought of committing suicide. Oh. <laughs> what is it, dear? Oh, it's Jill, and she's going to be married. <laughs> oh, darling, you're keeping me happy. 